When people think about Collectathon games, Banjo Kazooie is probably the first thing most people think of. And for very good reason. Banjo Kazooie is such a well known game that I probably don't need to tell you why people know it so well. So much has been said about it that me trying to add something new or meaningful to the conversation would be redundant and ultimately useless. And when people talk about Banjo Kazooie, they often make comments about how other companies tried their hand at the formula but ultimately failed to achieve the same level of perfection Banjo reached. Banjo Kazooie is a fantastic game, I won't dispute it. But, when it comes to collectathons, Jack and Daxter has always seemed to be the more appealing choice of the two. Jack and Daxter is functionally very similar to Banjo Kazooie. You explore levels and worlds while picking up things to collect and finding specific big things to collect, which lets you progress through the game and repeat from step one. The concept itself is a simple one, and it's understandably a niche genre, seeing as how a vocal portion of gamers these days see this kind of thing as tedious. What carries these kinds of games is the more mechanical and detail-oriented aspects of the game. How the character controls, the music, the characters, the levels, etc. People laud Banjo-Kazooie for its near-perfect balance of these aspects, but in my opinion, Jack and Daxter does some things much better than Banjo. Jack and Daxter's story drives it along just well enough that it gives the characters reason to explore the world, the player a reason to collect things, and the world reason to be filled with obstacles to stop you from doing so. Characters you interact with in this world are so unique and full of charm that the act of doing the tasks they inevitably send you to do become less a chore and more an extension of that character. Some notable characters are Daxter, who serves as Jack's voice and grants the game the vast majority of its personality. And we won't find any more of that dark gooey eco stuff, will we? Cause I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you! Catch! No matter what I try, I can't seem to catch a single fish in this river. Woo! Maybe it's your breath. I've got a power cell that says you can do it. Yeah! Lightning moles. We can! Maybe for two power cells! Do you want them? What Bird Brain here is trying to say is, we may have a few power cells laying around, and we might be willing to part with them for 90 orbs each. Where have I heard that before? Hey, how do you two geniuses expect to get that big gem out of here anyway? Well, smarty pants, we got 12 more years of digging to figure that out. Kira, the girl character who Jack, Daxter, and my nine-year-old self had a crush on, Yak Cow Man, who's gotta milk them yak cows, and the race man who just lost his pants. The characters serve to build the world and atmosphere, and give a reason to why it matters you collect these things, which is really all a story needs to be for a game like this. The atmosphere of this game isn't nearly as vibrant or colorful as Banjo's, but that really only contributes to the pacing and tone of this game. The color palette favors more natural colors, barring only a few specific instances where vibrant or supernatural things are supposed to stand out like eco or precursor orbs. The music is predominantly soft, islandy woodwind and percussion, but when it needs to be tense or exciting, it often uses heavier, deeper drums and a mini keyboard. It all comes together to make all these locations feel barren, exciting, and surprisingly cozy at times. The music even becomes environmental with so intrusive it seems. The levels are set up so you could ideally make one trip through and collect everything. There's very little backtracking, and very little is hidden or locked behind any gate beyond needing enough power cells to get to the next zone. As a result, there's very little downtime with this game. Unless you accidentally miss an egg or something, exploring is exciting, rewarding, natural, and pleasantly brief. There's no mindless scouring a confusing map for several hours, there's no waiting until you have the correct ability to get a collectible, there's none of that. Resources you need to solve a puzzle or activate a door or whatever are almost always readily accessible wherever they are needed, and if they're not, you're told exactly how to make those resources available to you. Coupled with the smooth and satisfying controls, the levels are a joy to explore and collect things in. If I were to make a complaint about Banjo for a second, it'd be that he is a very slippery and clumsy bear to control. You're either blasting off the speed of light with Talon Trot making wide turns that make it hard to navigate narrow passes, or you're padding along very slowly on foot. This problem does not exist with Jack and Daxter. Movement is fluid and responsive, especially with the roll jump. Jack moves and stops pretty much where you'd expect him to. The biggest problem with movement is sometimes the camera can be tough to wrestle with, but the same could be said for other 3D platforms. Jack and Daxter takes 3D platforming and makes it faster paced without sacrificing simplicity. You're given a fair amount of options in how you approach when you need to get from point A to point B. And combat never plays a major role in the game, but even it allows the game to keep its momentum. The attacks either let you move while attacking or lunge you forward. In either case, there should be no reason for you to stop even for a second while exploring, which I think is a great way to incorporate combat in a game that isn't at all centered around. Jack and Daxter does so little to waste your time that I always think the game takes much less time than it actually does. 
It's one of those games that you can start on a lazy weekend morning and be done with by dinner. There are only a few levels that actively make me very angry, and even then, they can be beaten with only a few repetitions. I've never heard of this game being praised the same way Banjo Kazooie is, but I think it certainly deserves that treatment. Jack and Daxter is a 3D platformer collectathon that is quick, fun, and satisfying to 100% complete. And really, what more could you ask for with a game like that?